now a part of Node.js and you should start using it if you haven't already started it. Well, the reason I'm creating this video is because while I was reading this amazing article, I came to know about a lot of interesting things. Now, Fetch isn't really a new library. And personally, I have been using Fetch since many years now. And Fetch has been around for more than five years. And I don't know how many, but at least more than five years. And it is used by millions of developers, probably around 70 to 80 million downloads every week, depending on what you are using front end or back end. And Fetch is finally now included in Node.js core. Now that doesn't mean you could not use Fetch before in Node.js because there was a library called as Node Fetch, which had more than 36 million downloads a week, which is not a joke, right? So why Node.js took the pain to add it in their core library, in the core module, when they didn't have to do it? Node Fetch could be simply used, right? So let me break it down to you what we are going to see in this video. First of all, I'll explain what Fetch is. I'll give you a quick example of how things used to be before this feature was added and how it will be after this feature is added in Node.js because right now it's an experimental phase. It's not included in the long-term version of Node.js as of today. Now, first of all, I'll give you a quick example and we'll take six to 90 seconds to cover all that. Then we'll see why Node.js included it into their core module. Third thing I want to see, I want to discover with you is that there's something called as what WG standard and we'll briefly see what that is. And eventually, if you have been using other amazing libraries like Axios, Request, SuperAgent, et cetera, well, what you need to do now? Is it a trouble? Should you move towards Fetch, et cetera? So we'll cover all of that one by one. <clears throat> so first of all, what is Fetch? So Fetch is a library. Basically, it was available in browsers since a long time. In, by which you could basically get or request API. You could do HTTP request, right? That was the core logic behind it. Now, Node.js, you could use it using Node Fetch, as I already told. And this is something how you would do it. Now, I'm using JSON placeholder because this is a free API uh, faker, which you can use for testing, et cetera, or small examples like the one I'm going to show you now. And this is a small code snippet that I prepared. So earlier you could use fetch in Node.js. And if you have been using React or any other client-side programming language, you're probably familiar with fetch because fetch is very common, especially in the client side in the front end. Now, the first thing is that you have to, first of all, download or NPM install the node fetch module, which I've already done. As you can see, it's in my dependencies version 3.2. Now this is, uh, I'm using stack blitz and this is ver node version 14. So right now we don't have fetch included in it, in the default version, right? Because it is available since 17.5 experimental version. And if you didn't know about this, there's a fun fact that all the odd number versions of Node.js are actually not standard. They will never become long-term. They'll never go to LTE support. So if you want to use Node.js in a production application or in a professional project, never choose an odd number. Always go with even. So Node.js 12, 14, 16, and in the future 18, are fine. Node.js 13, 15, 17 are not fine. They are experimental, they are still working on it, and they are not recommended to be used in production. Now, that was a side set though. Let's come back. So it is super easy to use. All you have to do is import. Then we are just doing the request to the JSON placeholder API, which is an HTTP request. And then you convert the JSON, and then I'm simply printing it out. So let's run it and see what happens. So node index.js. And there you go. We have the API response, which is simply a JSON in this case, and it is super simple to use. Now, this is what fetch library is and what it accomplishes. But the main thing is why did Node.js actually include it in their uh, core build, core library? And why is everyone obsessed about it? Because if you go to Hacker News, there are hundreds of threads in which people are talking about Fetch API and in Node.js, for example, I just pulled out the top one, uh, the one I found on the top, but there are hundreds, believe me. And developers are talking about this left and right. And I did not know anything about it. I just knew that there's something called Fetch, there's something called Axios, because I also use Axios, but I did not know what's the big deal. Well, the big deal is that there's something called as what WG community. Now, if you did not know about what WG, well, don't worry, you're not alone. I did not know about what WG before creating this video. Now, what WG is an online community which in which uh, great companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, and a lot of other developers are contributing to it just to make things leaner and cleaner for all web developers out there. 
because and why do we need to use that right and the reason is that api is an api api consists of a few important things that everyone needs to know that it is going to be probably an asynchronous call so you need to know asynchronous javascript you can use callbacks promises of async away it doesn't matter but you need to understand that then you need a url if you have a url you probably can make an api request some api requests might require some headers so what do you need first url second headers third the request body fourth the response body these are the only four things you should be worried about so why do developers when they move from one company to the other or one project to the other if they know what api is and what asynchronous code is why do they need to learn relearn a new library just to do the same thing if you can make a get http request in one language or one library you should be able to do the same in other right why are developers learning how to make api requests in 10 different ways because 10 different companies decided to use 10 different libraries right so that is what we want to avoid now i had been working for a company who uses node.js in build http request and they just hate themselves it's it's super awful and it's the worst so never do that so and what wg also said that fetch is the standard for api request and they introduced it i think a couple years ago it was last updated on march 2022 but this is just the update they brought this out they announced this about a couple years ago so even they want everyone to use the same thing because fetch is something special fetch is already there available in the front end and browsers so the another advantage is that when people move from front end to the back end they won't really have to learn anything new they already know how to use the library again saving time energy and money for a company also saving brain power of the developer so that he or she can focus on the most important thing and that is writing code and not you know learning different libraries to do the same thing essentially now the next part is that there are so many other libraries for example node fetch we already talked about this so this is going to be included in node.js which we already understood we already know what are the advantages and now the question is what if you have been using the node.js uh, current inbuilt http or axios which is you know not a joke it actually has 21 million downloads almost 22 million and these are weekly downloads and then there's a request which is deprecated but still almost 17 million weekly downloads super agent and these are just a few of hundreds of others available out there so all of these are available they do the same thing in the end yes they all bring some unique features but 99% of the developers don't really use those unique features they just use it to fetch an api request or just update something using an api etc so node.js is making a great step towards web standardization and i think all of us should embrace it and if you have been using axios or any other library you can think about starting to move towards fetch and the reason is there are many reasons for that right imagine imagine a new project being started next year what do you think they will use if node.js already has a library which can fetch api responses using the fetch library of course what do you think will they use will they ever reuse any other library will they ever download any other library no obviously not because fetch is one of the best it is understood by most developers it is included in the core build of node.js why would anyone download a new library so other libraries will slowly according to my opinion it's not written anywhere but they will slowly start dying they'll slowly start you know the time has come <laughs> we can say and uh, they, everyone will start moving towards request uh, so i think you should fetch sorry and i think you should also start thinking about that because that would be a great um, a great step towards more standardized things and if you have learned anything new if you didn't know fetch was coming to node.js or if you did not know about what wg community or anything like that if you know anything new please please hit the like to this video let us know in the comments down below what new thing you learned if any and while you are at it subscribe to the channel as well because that keeps us motivated to bring out more content learn more and share more with you guys so thank you very much and see you next time peace